let me show you my dashboard project. Here I'm using a whole bunch of different components. This is a gauge component uh, that looks like a speedometer. All I've done here is set the, the fill bitmap to a uh, freely available uh, speedometer that I found online. What the uh, gauge component does, it's got a couple of properties here. Uh, it's got a max value, so I just uh, figured that uh, 100, this is 100, so the zero would be 120, so let's put that as the max. That's my max value, I'm not going to go around, but I'll make one full rotation, so that's 120. The maximum angle, I figured out that that's 195 degrees right here. So 120, 120 miles an hour corresponds to 195 degrees, starting at uh, zero up here. So half a rotation plus 15 degrees. Minimum value is zero. That's where we're pointing at. The angle corresponding to the minimum value is negative 165. So 195 plus 165 is your full rotation of 360 degrees. Um, and then one final thing that we need to know in order to be able to place the zero uh, properly is we need to know what angle is it uh, zero at. It's at negative 165 in this case corresponds to the minimum value. Now if the minimum value would have been 10 then I would definitely have to specify the zero angle, otherwise it wouldn't uh, not compute correctly. Uh, this becomes even more um, visible here, where we have the uh, tilt values. I'm uh, prefer I'm using them as uh, degrees, so we go from minus 90 to plus 90 degrees on the tilt uh, values on x, y, and z. So my max value is 90. The maximum angle is 180, which is down. Negative 90 also is 180, but we, uh, we uh, set it to negative 180 to make it clear. Zero angle, the value zero corresponds to uh, zero in this case, straight up. Right? Same for all these tilt gauges. Um, the compass is actually, I haven't turned that into a component, it actually has, it would be a special gauge, it's got the uh, uh, needle going uh, down as well. Right, and the rest is just um, the, the other components, the uh, accelerometer, the location component for GPS locations, and the reverse geocoder. The reverse geocoder takes the latitude and longitude into an address. So, let's see here what we're doing. So on the events here on, uh, on Accelerate, on the accelerometer, what we're doing is I'm taking the values and multiplying by 90. So I get the range negative 90 to plus, uh, plus 90 on x, y, and z. Okay, and I just assign that to the gauge, uh, to the value property of the gauge. Uh, location updates, whenever I update the heading, so I update the, uh, set the rotation angle of the compass needle to uh, negative magnetic heading so that I get a working compass label or a compass uh, pin if you will, compass needle. And I also set the, uh, the heading property so the heading label dot text equals heading and then I put in the uh, uh, magnetic heading plus also the uh, accuracy. Location updates, very much the same. Uh, we make sure that we get uh, speed in miles per hour. Uh, and we set the latitude, uh, we set the longitude, and we set the altitude. And we also display numeric value of speed, uh, as well as course. So if we go back to the UI here, if the device was actually moving, like in a car, or for instance, um, I'm not going to demonstrate that because I'm not going to uh, drive and uh, shoot, uh, point the camera at the uh, phone <laughs> while I'm driving. So anyway, trust me, this, uh, uh, this uh, speedometer is actually working. Uh, it works great um, uh, while you're uh, biking or walking even. It'll give you a little four to five miles, uh, miles per hour when you're walking. 
Um, okay, so the reverse geocoder, finally, it has a, uh, if we get an error, then we display not applicable. If we get a, uh, if we found an address or a place mark, as they call it in iOS, then we add the address, uh, the city, the state, um, and the country in this case. And I think uh, zip as well, probably. Yeah, the postal code here. So, again, um, this doesn't entirely work in um, uh, the simulator. So let's take a look at uh, the device once again. So here's my device. I'm going to go run the uh, FMX Dash application here, right here. Here's my dashboard application. And as you can see, it says my address is 5619. Oh, it tripped over to 5615. We're actually right between uh, those two addresses. Sometimes it says 5617, which is the correct one. Uh, you see the, the tilt gauges here as I'm moving the device around. See the X, Y, and Z are all moving around. You also see the, the compass working here. And of course we can see the, the actual location data, uh, the heading plus minus 10, the latitude plus minus 33 feet. Uh, th that's the accuracy. Uh, we've got the altitude. There's the accuracy for that as well. Let's take a look at how these components are implemented now. Let's start with the gauge. So the gauge is going to be based off of a circle. The circle provides fill that I set the uh, bitmap of. So in this case, I set the speedometer. The only thing that we really add to uh, the circle then is uh, the needle. We have the needle center and then we have the needle. And the needle in the needle center is actually one compound component. So if we take a look at the code, uh, as I said, it's based off of T-Circle. And then we add uh, a couple of properties and fields and methods. Uh, we have a value field. This is going to be our speed in the, case, in the case of a speedometer or our tilt value in case of a tilt gauge. We have the max and min values. We also have the angles that correspond to your minimum, your maximum, and also in the case of the minimum not being zero, we need to know one fixed point. I also surfaced the colors for the needle center and the needle color itself. As you can see here in the UI, for the speedometer, they're both red, but in the tilt gauge, the center is red and the needle itself is yellow. Then we just have a, all the setters up here as procedures and all the internal fields that are going to contain those values. We also override the resize method here. Well, let's take a look at the creation. Just like uh, creating a compo component in VCL, really, we call the inherited. Uh, we set a whole bunch of default values. We create the needle center. We parent it to the gauge. We set the width and the height of the needle center. We set the X and Y uh, position. They're depending on the width and height as well. And we set the fill color of the needle center to be the default color, which is red. And we don't want to store this needle center component because if we do, uh, we'll run into issues with streaming. So when you drop one down on the form and then you go back and uh, view it as uh, text and come back again, you'll have a brand new needle center in addition to the one that's already contained in the component. The final thing we create in the constructor is the needle itself. It's a rectangle. We parent it to the needle center that we created up here. We set the width and the height of the needle and the X and Y, as well as the uh, default color, which is red as well. And we make sure we don't store this component. Whenever we resize the component at runtime or in design time, we have to recalculate the position of the needle center uh, and the needle. So we do that uh, given the uh, width and the height. These have already been reset by the time we get a resize message. The setter for uh, set max, set max angle, set min angle, etc., all assign 
the uh, values to the internal fields and make sure that the needle gets updated and redrawn. Update needle takes care of setting the rotation angle of the needle center and as I said that will also make sure that the needle itself changes. Pretty simple math here uh, for the uh, rotation angle. I just uh, multiply the value that we have uh, by F max angle minus min angle and divide by the actual max and min and offset it with the angle for zero. Uh, in the registration method we make sure that the component is registered so that in the UI when you want to drop another one down you can just go in here and find the TIOS gauge and uh, drop another one down. And as you can tell you know, we can resize this to our heart's content as well. So let's go take a look at the accelerometer so we define here an acceleration event, uh, x, y, and z. Those are uh, values between negative 1 and plus 1 that come back from the actual uh, device. We define our accelerometer component. It's going to have a, uh, uh, an event right here on accelerate. We're going to have an update interval. Uh, this is the update interval in hertz. By default, it's 100 hertz. Uh, we're going to have a property enabled that tells us whether we get acceleration uh, data or not. Then we have to declare the actual class that maps to the Objective C uh, class and the internals of the uh, acceleration event that happens. It's a callback, so we have a delegate as well uh, right here. So here's our acceleration uh, delegate. The method that gets called is accelerometer did accelerate with uh, a message a UI accelerometer that provides the data. We have an instance variable for that delegate. We also have a instance variable uh, to keep track of our um, accelerometer. This is just to make sure that we don't drop multiple accelerometers onto one form because it doesn't really make any sense. So as you can see down here, if we have one already existing, I just put up an exception saying I'm not going to let you have more than one. The actual accelerometer did accelerate implementation. What it does is simply make sure that there is a global accelerometer assigned and that it has an event handler. If it does have an event handler, then we simply call it with the uh, acceleration data X, Y, and Z. When the accelerometer gets created, like I said, we make sure we, uh, we're the first one. We allocate the delegate. We set uh, some default values. Set the global uh, to point to what we just created. The destructor, we have to uh, make sure that we uh, uh, release the delegate. When we change the value of enabled, we have to make sure that we set the delegate or set it to nil. By default, when we set it to an existing delegate, it's turned on and if it's set to nil, it's turned off. In the set update interval, we call the set update interval method of the shared accelerometer on the UI accelerometer uh, object. Finally, uh, the component is registered on the iOS tab as TIOS accelerometer. For location, we provide uh, T location data. This is a record containing latitude, longitude, altitude, speed, course, and accuracy. Uh, we also have a heading data, so we have magnetic heading, true heading, and accuracy for that as well. We have a couple of events. We have the update location event and the update heading event. Finally, the iOS location component itself is going to have a bunch of properties and methods. The main part is enabled, uh, whether it's on or off. A sub to that is update location and update heading. There could be instances where we just want to know uh, GPS coordinates. In that case, we just turn on update location. And in other cases, we could just have uh, a case where we want to uh, use the compass. So we just want heading updates. Uh, we have the update interval. And we have the two uh, events that are surfaced on update location and on update heading. Uh, much like in the uh, case of the accelerometer, we have a location delegate. It has a location manager as part of it. We have two messages here. We have a did update to location from location, and we have a did update heading. We have a internal pointer to that uh, location delegate. Whenever we get called on the did update to location from location, we simply 
store off the latitude, the longitude, the altitude, the speed, and the course, as well as the horizontal and vertical accuracy. And then we call back on the Delphi component the on update location uh, if everything is assigned correctly, meaning you have a location object as well as an event handler. Very similar on update heading, we store off the magnetic heading, the true heading, and the heading accuracy that we get back from the device, and we surface it on an event. The constructor, uh, much as the uh, accelerometer, uh, prevents you from having one, more than one component. It sets up the location delegate uh, by initializing it and the location manager by initializing that. We set default values, enable this true, set update location and update heading. We also set the uh, desired accuracy. In the destructor, uh, we take care of releasing uh, the internal location manager and the uh, location delegate. In the case of uh, setting the component to enabled or disabled, we uh, assign the location delegate variable or we set it to nil. For update heading, we call the location manager dot start updating heading or stop updating heading depending on the state of that. Same thing for set update location. We call location manager dot start updating location or stop updating location as opposed to heading. Finally, register the component as TIOS location on the iOS tab.